The 13th Tuesday, we talk about the perfect day. <clears throat> Maury wanted to be cremated. He had discussed it with Charlotte, and they decided it was the best way. The rabbi from Brandis, Al Axelrad, a longtime friend whom they chose to conduct the funeral service, had come to visit Maury, and Maury told him of his cremation plans. And Al, yes, make sure they don't overlook me. The rabbi was stunned, but Maury was able to joke about his body now. The closer he got to the end, the more he saw it as a mere shell, a container of the soul. It was withering to useless skin and bones anyhow, which made it easier to let go. We are so afraid of the sight of death, Maury told me when I sat down. I adjusted the microphone on his collar, but it kept flopping over. Maury coughed. He was coughing all the time now. I read a book the other day. It said as soon as someone dies in a hospital, they pull sheets over their head and they wheel the body to some chute and push it down. They can't wait to get it out of their sight. People ask, just death is contagious. I fumbled with a microphone. Maury glanced at my hands. It's not contagious, you know. Death is as natural as life. It's part of the deal we made. He coughed again, and I moved back and waited, always braced for something serious. Maury had been having bad nights lately, frightening nights. He could sleep only a few hours at a time before violent hacking spells woke him up. The nurses would come into the bedroom, pound on his back, try to bring up the poison. Even if they got him breathing normally again, normally, meaning with the help of an oxygen machine, the fight left him fatigued the whole next day. The oxygen tube was up his nose now. I hated the sight of it. To me, it symbolized helplessness. I wanted to pull it out. Last night, Maury said softly, yes, last night, I had a terrible spell. It went on for hours, and then I wasn't really sure if I was going to make it. No breath, no end to the choking. At one point, I started to get dizzy, and then I felt a certain peace. I felt that I was ready to go. His eyes widened. Mitch, it was a most incredible feeling. The sensation of accepting what was happening, being at peace. I was thinking about a dream I had last week where I was crossing a bridge into some unknown, being ready to move on to whatever is next. But you didn't. Maury waited a minute. He shook his head slightly. No, I didn't, but I felt that I could. Do you understand? That's what we're all looking for, a certain peace with the idea of dying. If we know in the end that we can ultimately have that peace with dying, then we can finally do the really hard thing, which is make peace with living. He asked to see the hibiscus plant on the ledge behind him. I cupped it in my hand and held it up near his eyes. He smiled. It's natural to die, he said it again. It's natural to die. The fact that we make such a big hula boo over it is because we don't see ourselves as part of nature. We think because we're human, we're something above nature. We think because we're human, we're something above nature. He smiled at the plan. We're not. Everything that gets born, dies. He looked at me. Do you accept that? Yes. All right, he whispered. Now here's the payoff. Here's how we are different from those wonderful plants and animals. As long as we can love each other and remember the feeling of love we had, we can die without ever really going away. All the love you created is still there. All the memories are still there. You live on in the hearts of everyone you have touched and nurtured while you were here. His voice was raspy, which usually meant he needed to stop for a while. I placed the plants back on the ledge and went to shut off the tape recorder. This is the last sentence Maury got out before I did. Death ends a life, not a relationship. There had been a development in the treatment of ALS, an experimental drug that was just getting passage. It was not a cure, but a delay, a show, slowing of the decay for perhaps a few months. Maury had heard about it, but he was far too gone. Besides, the medicine wouldn't be available for several months. Not for me, Maury said, dismissing it. And all the time he was sick, Maury never held out hope that he would be cured. He was realistic to a fault. One time I asked if someone were to wave a magic wand and make him all better, would he become in time the man he had been before? He shook his head. No way could I go back. I am a different self now. I'm different in my attitudes. I'm different appreciating my body, which I don't fully before. I'm different in terms of trying to grapple with the big questions, the ultimate questions, the ones that won't go away. That's the thing, you see. Once you get your fingers on the important questions, you can't turn from them. And what are the important questions? Jana, why are you messing with Moses?
That's an important question. As I see it, they have to do with love, responsibility, spirituality, awareness. And if I were healthy today, those would still be my issues. They should have been all along. I tried to imagine Maury healthy. I tried to imagine him pulling the covers from his body, stepping from that chair. The two of us going for a walk around the neighborhood, the way we used to walk around campus. I suddenly realized it had been 16 years since I'd seen him standing up. 16 years? What if you had one day perfectly healthy, I asked. What would you do? 24 hours? 24 hours. Let's see. I'd get up in the morning, do my exercises, have a lovely breakfast of sweet rolls and tea, go for a swim, then have my friends come over for a nice lunch. I'd have them come one or two at a time so we could talk about their families, their issues, talk about how much we mean to each other. Then I'd like to go for a walk in a garden with some trees, watch the colors, watch the birds, take in the nature that I haven't seen in so long now. In the evening, we'd all go together to a restaurant with some great pasta, maybe some duck. I love duck. And then we'd dance the rest of the night away. I'd dance all the wonderful dance partners out there until I was exhausted. And then I'd go home and have a deep, wonderful sleep. That's it? That's it? It was so simple, so average. I was actually a little disappointed. I figured he'd fly to Italy to have lunch with the president or romp on the seashore, try every exotic thing he could think of. After all these months lying there, unable to move a leg or foot, how could he find perfection in such an average day? Then I realized that this was the whole point. Before I left that day, Maury asked if he could bring up a topic. Your brother, he said. I felt a shiver. I do not know how Maury knew that was on my mind. I've been trying to call my brother in Spain for weeks, and I learned from a friend uh, that he was flying back and forth to a hospital in Amsterdam. Mitch, I know it hurts when you can't be with someone you love, but you need to be at peace with his desires. Maybe he doesn't want you interrupting your life. Maybe he can't deal with that burden. I tell everyone I know to carry on with their life they know. Don't ruin it because I'm dying. But he's my brother, I said. I know, Maury said. That's why it hurts. I saw Peter in my mind when he was eight years old, his curly blonde hair pulled into a sweaty ball atop his head. I saw us wrestling in the yard next to our house, the grass stains soaked through the knees of our jeans. I saw him singing songs in the front of the mirror, holding a brush as a microphone. And I saw us squeezing into the attic where we hid together as children, testing our parents' will to find us for dinner. And then I saw him as the adult who had drifted away, thin and frail, his face bony from chemotherapy treatments. Maury, I said, why doesn't he want to see me? My old professor sighed. There is no formula to relationships. They have to be negotiated in loving ways with room for both parties. What they want and what they need, what they can do and what their life is like. In business, people negotiate to win. They negotiate to get what they want. Maybe you too used to do that. Love is different. Love is when you are concerned about someone else's situation as you are about your own. You've had these special times with your brother and you no longer have what you had with him. You want them back. You never want them to stop. But that's part of human being. Stop. Renew. Stop. Renew. Stop. Renew. I looked at him. I saw all the death in the world. I felt helpless. They'll find a way back to your brother, Morris said. How do you know? Morris smiled. I found you, didn't I? You found me, didn't you? That was uh, Tuesdays with Maury. Um That was um, <clears throat> the 13th Tuesday. They talk about the perfect day. My name is Gregory Brandt. Uh, make sure to hit the thumbs up and subscribe button. And go ahead and post this on your Facebook or Instagram uh, if you enjoyed it, which you did. Thanks.